this episode, we're going to talk about the five different types of variables in Ruby and show what some of the differences are and when to use them, when not to use them. The first are some of the most common, and these are local variables. And you may notice also I'm now using a text editor instead of REPL. And the main reason for that is because REPL has a, weird, a few kind of weird things on how it handles uh, classes and things like that. Uh, nothing that would affect most programs, but when we're really trying to draw the distinction between variables, it is a lot easier to do it here. So a local variable is a variable that limits itself to within the local scope of wherever it's declared. So in other words, whether it's a method or a loop, it's only available in that package. So here's an example of it. I'm gonna say that uh, this is a quick way to do a loop. I'm going to say 10 times do, uh, which is a code block, and we'll get into all this later, uh, but for the sake of this, just know that this is a loop, and I'm going to say x is equal to 10. And uh, so if I wanted to print this out, I could do p x save it, and if I open up the Rails, or the Ruby console here, and you can run your program by first making sure that you're in the right uh, directory, and I am, and this uh, file is called variable types, and then just type in Ruby and the name of the file, and it'll run any code that's in here. So Ruby, variable types, hit return, and you can see it prints out the variable 10, 10 times, because that's what this loop does. But now what would happen if I got rid of that, and I did p x down here. Uh, theoretically, you think, oh, this x uh, is set, and after the loop, uh, the x is still going to be 10. But let's uh, clear the console, and let's run it again. And you can see this throws an error. It says undefined local variable or method x for the main object. And so what this means is it can't, tell you what the value of x is because x is not available in this file scope. x was only available here. That's why it's called a local variable because it's only available in the local scope. So that's what a local variable looks like. I'm going to comment that out and go down to global variables. I'm going to copy this just so you can tell the difference. I'm going to run pretty much the exact same code and say 10 times do this, except now the syntax for a global variable is to put a dollar sign in front of it. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of x inside the loop and also x uh, outside of the loop. So now let's come back here, run it again, and you can see it prints out 10 because when you, made, when you make X global like this, it's available for the rest of the application. And this can actually be a horrible idea. And the concept of using global variables is uh, it's really not something that you're gonna do on a regular basis. I think I may have used a global variable one time in my life as a developer, and I still think that I was probably just being lazy that one time. There's probably a better way of doing it. Uh, and the reason for this is, uh, let me uh, let me give you a scenario. I'm going to, let's pretend that we have, and I'm gonna open them up. So say we have right here, file one, and here we have file two. So in file one, let's pretend we have a really long algorithm, and in some part of the algorithm, I create a global variable, and I set it, this is, let's, this is gonna be a baseball program. So I set this equal to the Yankees. Now, if, say I don't even, I'm not the only developer in this program. Say another developer is working on file two. They're both in the same program, but different files. Now with file two, 
this other developer is working on it and he decides that he wants to create a global variable and name it the exact same thing as a global variable here. And the only difference is this time his algorithm is going to make this global variable equal to the Astros. When this program gets run, the last one or the last file that gets called is going to be the one that sets it. So your developer here who created file one is going to have no idea what's going on because even though he thinks his program's working, the output doesn't equal what he actually put in there. And it can lead to a lot of very confusing work. And so what you'd want to do is use something that has less scope. You'd want to use most likely a local or an instance variable. So that's why you, even though uh, you may think that, oh, this is an easy way to, uh, to get around a certain problem, like making a value available across an entire application, there's usually a lot better way of doing it. So let's comment that out. And for instance variables, uh, I'm going to show you the syntax here, but in I'm going to show you in a real life uh, Ruby on Rails application how this is actually used, because I think it's a pretty intuitive way that the Rails creators did it. And a instance variable starts off with an at symbol and then whatever you want to call it. So uh, sticking with our baseball theme, we could just say... Uh, at symbol batting underscore average and then you can set this equal to whatever you want so uh, we'll set it equal to 300 um, so this is how you set an instance variable so what is an instance variable it is a variable that is available to that instance uh, if that doesn't make sense, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to show you in a real life application what this looks like. So this is a Rails application that I have open right here. It's actually a production application I have. And right here, let's look at the top action or the top method. And it's this index action. And inside the index action, you may notice we have an instance variable. Now, you don't have to worry about what's here on the right hand side. Uh, if you've taken my Rails course or uh, if you know a little bit of Rails, you'll know that this is a database query. All you have to know is that this returns an array and it stores it inside of this jobs instance variable. Now, this instance variable is not available to any of the other methods here in this class. So if destroy called on at jobs, it's going to throw an error because it's not available. It's only available to this specific instance of this method. And the other neat thing is because you th you'd say, OK, well, if it's in that method, why in the world wouldn't you just make it like this and make it a local variable? And the reason is because you want the ability in Rails with the way it's structured to share data from the controller to the view file. So right here you see this is the index method and here is the index view file and with the way rails works uh, this is actually mapped so the index view file is essentially communicating directly with this index action based off of the route uh, don't worry about that side that has nothing to do with what we're teaching right now but what, it, uh, what I do want you to know is that when you are using an instance variable, you're able to share it among different instances of that method. So right here, this is uh, connected to that method via the route and it, the value is passed. And so if you come down to line 44 right here, you can see at jobs dot each and then it iterates and it uh, prints out each one of the jobs. This is available here only because we made it an instance variable in this index action here. So this is, if you're using Rails, you're going to use a lot of instance variables, and it's a great way of sharing the information from, the, uh, from a method in the controller into the view. So that's what index uh, in, uh, instance variables look like and how you can use them. Uh, the next one is a constant. 
Now, a constant, if you come from other programming languages, Ruby handles constants differently than you may be used to. So I'm going to do something here. Uh, constant syntax is all capital letters. And then you could say, so for this, I'm going to say team. And I'm going to set this equal to a string of angels. Now, in a normal application or a normal programming language, when you set a constant, nothing can change that constant value. That's kind of the whole point, right? But what uh, Ruby does, Ruby is so flexible, it doesn't really hold you back from doing that. And so if I duplicate this and I say team here is equal to the athletics, and then I'm going to print out team. Which one of these do you think it's going to uh, print out? If this was a traditional programming language, it would either throw an error or it would print out angels because it's a constant and a constant can be changed. But if we come back to the console and I'm going to hit clear to come up to the top and run the code again, you can see right here it actually prints out athletics. So it does change the value. Uh, you may notice we have a couple lines up here and it gives warnings. It says warning, already initialized constant team. Warning, previous definition of team was, athlete, was here and now it's athletics. So Ruby will let you know that, hey, uh, you should probably shouldn't be changing a constant. It's definitely considered a bad practice, uh, but it will still let you do it. So just be careful with that, especially if you're coming from other languages where that is something that either wouldn't work or uh, just would throw an error. So it will only throw a warning. Uh, the last one is a class variable, and a class variable is just a variable that is available to that class uh, instance. And so if I do my class, the syntax for this is two at symbols, and then whatever you want to uh, call it. So we can say teams and in an array and put the A's and uh, the Tigers and then end the class and that's how you would set a instance or a uh, a class variable now one thing to keep in mind uh i honestly i'm not even sure the last time i've even used a class variable i usually don't find them very handy and i know a number of other ruby developers who probably haven't even ever used them in their life uh, it's usually i can find a way of having a local or a instance variable do all of the work that a class variable will do. Uh, but if you ever do see these in programs, that's what it represents is a, a variable that's available to that class. So there you've gone through and have a good idea on the five different types of variables and their syntaxes and when to use them and what, when not to use them. Uh, some practical advice uh, in building real world Ruby programs or rail programs, your local variables and your instance variables are probably going to take up about 98% of all of the different variables you're going to use. So those are the ones you're probably going to want to become the most familiar with. So great job if you went through that. You should now have a pretty good understanding of all the different types of Ruby variables that are out there and when to use them.